salutations, greetings, and welcome to the movie remix. Thanks to my talented, creative, and auspicious friend, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hey, Constance. <laughs> she came up with this amazing idea to, comp to compare similarities and differences between original movies and their remakes, a la movie remix. <laughs> hey, Constance. Um, so over this past weekend, I was uh, looking for some brain candy uh, during the quarantine, something else to watch instead of to kind of drown out all of the craziness that's been going on. And I ended up watching Sleepless in Seattle. And if you've seen Sleepless in Seattle, you know that there is a movie that is a thread through the movie in the background of that film. And I kept, every time the movie came up, I kept going, they remade that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I thought I should watch it, the remake again and write an article to compare it for Pop Culture Uncovered. And then I thought about doing this video and I thought, it would be more fun to talk about it with a friend. So I called Constance. So thank you for joining me today, Constance. Anytime. So to introduce our first film, thank you to Sleepless in Seattle. Our first film is An Affair to Remember from 1957. Affair to Remember is a remake. <laughs> <laughs> which mm -hmm. we learned today. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The original version is called Love Affair from 1939, and it was remade again as Love Affair in 1994. So let's do the plot summary. You want to start, Constance? So this engaged playboy meets engaged woman while they're traveling mm -hmm. he is instantly smitten and she is so attracted but <gasps> no she can't do it because she is engaged <laughs> so she offers you know because her reputation is at stake here and so is his yes and he is well known every time <laughs> right he is definitely well known during a layover in 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 their trip, mm -hmm. they begin to interact, meet, and then he takes her on this trip to see a personal family member of his, and then she too decides to fall in love, and that's where the these feelings of love and oh, I can't help myself come from because how do you say mm -hmm. she sees a different side of him as they are as they are arriving home he decides to find a real job so he can become worthy of her and they give it three six months depending on which film that you're watching and then they decide they're going to meet at the empire state at the top of the empire state building mm -hmm. so things happen da da da, da. They go to meet on that day. She gets into an accident, which disables her. And unfortunately, she's not able to meet him. So things go south. Then they come together again in an outing when they're out with their respective ex fiancés. And they come together, they see each other, and then he meets her again at her, at her home. And then they, discovers the truth of mm -hmm. what really happened and you know it's just a happy ending all around yes so that is the affair to remember uh love affair smoothie and story um quick note um quick trivia part that i loved about in the notes and in the research i don't know if you caught this in the in the research and in the notes um the director for the 1957 version and the 1939 version, same director. <laughs> um, I, 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 I missed that. <laughs> yeah. His name is Leo McCary. Um, huh. Yes. 
Leo McGarry is the name of the uh, is the name of the director. He he directed the 1939 version and the 1957 version. Oh, the writer. They are also credited. They are Leo McGarry and Mildred Cram are also credited as writers on all three versions. Even though those two have been long dead. Dead. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, although I guess so, mm -hmm. simply because like if you especially if when you watch them back to back, mm -hmm. you see a lot of the um so a lot of the lines mm -hmm. were were used again. Yeah. That's true. Like I read somewhere when I was like going through stuff that movie one and movie two are pretty much a shot for shot they're shot for shot remakes it's like he did it the first time and then said okay i'm going to correct like everything i didn't get to do the first time i'm going to do the second time Fine. just to Great. make it better <laughs> and they absolutely utilized mm -hmm. like because in fact if any scene um was poignant enough mm -hmm. or where you definitely recognize the same wording is when they uh the scene when he comes to her home at the end yes. and the whole well why didn't you tell me because it is what you said you know that whole scene was verbatim the exact same you're right in all three movies it was the exact <laughs> same i was like um okay <laughs> it was exact i was like I can now be, I can add this because I've heard it a, a couple of times. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They definitely, so they should, I guess, credit the writers because mm -hmm. <laughs> they use their, they definitely use their mm -hmm. uh, words over and over again. And that, like I said, I remember that scene in particular mm -hmm. because of just the longing mm -hmm. of, of each of the characters. Mm -hmm. but they definitely reused a lot of the mm -hmm. um wording the same verbatim lines throughout mm -hmm. the film i think i think from film one to film two i think they use the exact same sets too looking at the uh, looking at okay i'm going to make this distinction right now between films one and two and three in films one and two the elder is a grandmother in film three the elder is an aunt which is why i which is why in the notes I wrote elder. <laughs> and I'm very, and I'm confused as to why mm -hmm. they changed that. Like, I mean, it would be interesting to know, like, mm -hmm. why go from the grandmother to the aunt? Not that it was like problematic, because. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you also remember that they also changed where they were. Okay. Um, so of course from ah, you're right you're right yeah okay so um so we should say this so in the original two versions the couple are on a cruise oh, from europe to america to new york yeah to new york in the third film in the 1994 version the cup the couple is traveling from los angeles to Sydney, have to plane make an right. They're on a plane, but they have to make an emergency landing on this little island, and mm -hmm. then they end up on a, on a ship. ship, on a and on a Russian ship, on a Russian ship, <laughs> right? To and, and then they end up visiting the aunt in Tahiti or Fiji <laughs> or or Hawaii. <laughs> Because they're somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Right, because it was Hawaii, Tahiti, <laughs> or Fiji, like one of those three places that you had to opt to go. And then from there, you would get your connecting flight to, to your, go original, destination. your original destination. Mm -hmm. and, I, and if you're going to update the movie from the 50s to the 90s, that was a reasonable change, I guess. I, but, but you had to get them on the boat. But... That, but because because there was no way. But there, but okay. So, but but hear me out. Go ahead. I'm listening. In the 1994 version, mm -hmm. if okay, so because you're right, they were supposed to go to one of these islands. Mm -hmm. Where is the grandmother? Because she ain't on one of those islands. <laughs> She's just <laughs> not. I'm sorry, the aunt. Mm -hmm. 
because you, you remember like you come out and then like you know they go go through this pasture with these horses i was like there's no island there <laughs> it was gorgeous. Oh, that scene, it was gorgeous. I was actually thinking it was more of a vineyard in Italy somewhere. That, that wasn't an island. But okay, I'll take it. I'll believe the lie this time. <laughs> but you know what they took out, though, now that I think about it, from the older versions to the newer versions in the... The chapel scene? The chapel scene. Yeah. And I was, and I was actually... Um, Thinking, I was like, I wonder what the motivation was. Is it because we're a more secular society now, so we don't place as much value mm -hmm. in religion, or was it because religion is so uh, because there's you know because I'm thinking like 1994, you're you have more exposure to more religions, so as I guess not to isolate groups of people, because when you look at yeah. the older versions it, she was definitely catholic yeah you know christian catholic definitely and both that. you're true so i think maybe i mean granted i don't know because i didn't write the movie but but i like I think, the chapel scene i agree with you i think it was really it was really sweet and it was and it um kind of smoothed over that awkwardness that the grandmother and uh terry mckay they initially had it right. it literally i guess to me it was that scene that allowed the grandmother to really see that you know even though she may not have been in the chapel with her she's like oh this is a good woman this is you know yeah great the, a good woman for my grandson yeah whereas in the 1994 version you didn't have that so it was just literally this little weird awful conversation that the two of them had mm -hmm. and then you're you're made to believe that this leap of the aunt's affections for terry happened while they were while she was playing the piano and she was singing yeah and to me in the older versions that was just kind of like the icing on the cake and that's actually not so much for the grandmother as for um Nicola or uh -huh. Michael to right. see to see her. You know, like that, right. that scene was more for him, for his feelings to evolve versus bonding for the grandmother and the and Terry. I agree. And I also think there's also something a little bit bonding about it for for Michael, Nicolo, and Terry. And yeah. that's a, and that's another difference we're going to that's another difference in similarity that we're going to bring up right now because we both found this found this kind of interesting and kind of funny in the discussion of the movie and then we'll also discuss the actors and the mo at this moment as well in every version of this movie the playboy male has a different name <laughs> yeah. the elder has a different name Terry is Terry McKay in every film. <laughs> and he's like, he just, I guess that was, we landed on the perfect name, no need to change it. Right, no reason to change it. But I personally like the name Nikolai. Nicolo. Mm -hmm. I like Nicolo as well. So Mike seems to me so much, and please, Michaels, do not be offended. You're <laughs> loved across the world. I right, promise. you are loved. You are, you are affirmed. <laughs> but for me mm -hmm. because Niccolo is not as common as a name yeah it gives him that more um star power yeah. you know and it just adds to that playboy mystique because you know you can just you can just kind of hear the woman like Niccolo Niccolo it's not the same Michael you know right like, hey Michael like what's up Mike you know that's right that, I mean that's just me I agree. So for the original version of Love Affair, was that's the original version of the film from 1939. Um, the Playboy, is, as we've called him, is uh, played by Charles Boyer, and his name is Michael Marnay. Terry McKay is played by Irene Dunn. And Maria Ospinkaya <laughs> plays the grandmother. Brava. <laughs> I worked on that today. 
<laughs> Go ahead and take a fair to remember. <laughs> so in a fair to remember, the, the version made in 1957, Cary Grant plays Nikki Fer Ferranti. Mm -hmm. Yet again, these weird different names. Nicolai. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah Kerr plays Terry McKay. Mm -hmm. And Kathleen Nesbitt plays the grandmother, Jean Jean Wu? Jean Jean Wu. Jean Wu. Now, Love Affair in 1994, we get Warren, husband and wife, Warren Beatty, uh, as Mike Gambrell. Uh, his wife, as I said, Annette Benning, and Catherine Hepburn as his aunt Jenny. This was Catherine Hepburn's final uh, major film release, final big screen release. She did appear in another television movie later that same year, but this was her final movie release. Uh, big film. Okay. Mm -hmm. A little bit of trivia. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, I have another little bit of piece of trivia because I thought this was funny. Uh, Kathleen Nesbitt was playing Cary Grant's grandmother. Yes. There's only a 15 year age difference. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's one hell of a makeup job. Right? Bravo <laughs> 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 to the makeup right? artist. Because I was looking into that. I'm like, I wonder, because like, I'm like, did they? Because when I read that about Katherine Hepburn, I was like, well, where, like, let me look into the other older actresses. Like, I'm just curious, were they also um, actresses, well-known actresses at the time, at the end of their careers? Like, I was just curious. And uh, no, like, uh, Kathleen Nesbitt had made, like, another 10, 10 films after this. Uh, Maria had made, like, another uh -huh. four or five films after hers. So... <laughs> And there we are. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that we brought up um, when we when we kind of did our little pre-discussion outline about this film that we also found interesting was that in the first two films, we do not get a sense that uh, Nikki or Michael Marnay had any type of job other than messing with wealthy women where Maybe that's a job in itself that might be it, it might be <laughs> <laughs> where um mike marnay warren Beatty, is in his universe was the uh tom brady former football star football. right commentary television commentary commentator that's the word that's what i'm looking for commentator um thanks to the help of his girlfriend or his fiance. And he wasn't very good at it, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they all Imagine like- Imagine that. <laughs> but they all like spending money that they didn't know they needed or had. Um, that was actually the other thing that was really funny to me, mm -hmm. real quick, is in the original versions, the, he, uh, his go-to when he decided to get a job he decided to paint mm -hmm. that was his thing and the last version mm -hmm. even though he was even though he painted really well the job that ultimately made him happy was being a coach for some you know non-regular or you know some unheard of college that like so the painting was just a you know, something that he did once or twice just because he was good at it, right? It, was a, it yep. wasn't, he didn't opt to do that as a way of actually making money. Right. Whereas the original, that's what they opted, what he opted to do was to become a painter. What I found interesting with the, um, I don't remember from the first version, but what is definitely interesting in the second version in the Nicoli Ferranti characters that I remember that his agent said to him that if you would sign these paintings in your name, yeah, and sell them all tomorrow. And he would not do that. Right. He's like, I want to make my money. He's like, I want to sell these paintings as a nobody. 
and then I'll sign them. He's like, I want to know that I'm good before. Or, right. In other words, right. Because he wanted to know he was good mm -hmm. based on the merit of his work, not on his name. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was a really interesting because there's also something that the grandmother says, says in that scene before they leave the house where she says he's extremely talented, but what the painter creates, the critic destroys. Ah, oh, you're right. I she love that line. <laughs> you're right. She did say that. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing line. That's an amazing line. Yeah, because right, she yeah, because that's what she was saying to mm -hmm. Terry. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, as she's talking about, as she's talking about her her family member. Right. The mm -hmm. right because either. It, <laughs> Either the grandson or his or her or nephew. The nephew. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought it was also interesting to talk about um, how the movie was received at the time it came out, the, at each time that it was released. Um, the 1939 version um, had a budget of about eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars at the time i did not do the inflation math i don't know where that calculator is i don't and made a hundred made 1.8 million dollars so it was a huge success and was nominated for a a good amount of oscars including um best supporting actress for the grandmother best original story art direction best original song um, and uh, Outstanding Production, and Best Actress for Irene Dunn. The 1960, 1957 version was one of the top grossing films of that year um, on a $2.1 million budget and made $3.8 million. One for, uh, had uh, nominations for Best Cinematography, Best Costume, Best Original Song, Best Original Score. Talk about the 1994 version. <laughs> It, it did not do so well. <laughs> the 1994 budget, 60 million. Mm -hmm. Six mil, 60 million. Mm -hmm. It made 18 million and zero for award nominations. Mm -hmm. And was critically just, mm -hmm. was very sad. Yes. In general, the 1957 version is seen as one of the most romantic movies. It is on the, AF, the AFI, the American Film Institute, has an, a top 100 romantic movies list. This is the number one film. Unfair to remember is the number one film hmm. on that list. Um, so it is, uh, it is a beautiful film, I do have to say, the, the 1957 version. So, of course, our question now, Constance, which one? Which one? <laughs> which version did I like better? Yeah. I will say, ironically, mm -hmm. because, and my mom, if you ever tell my mom, mm -hmm. I'll deny it. Okay, even though it's on video. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the 1957 version. And normally I'm, I'm that person that likes the, mm -hmm. the oh. updated or the more modern version. Mm -hmm. But I definitely liked the 1957 version a little more because I, I felt like their interaction was more authentic. She was definitely quirk, quirkier. Mm -hmm. There was more, I don't know, personality in it for me. Like it didn't seem trite. Right. And granted, I'm not hands down to me it was a little harder to follow in some like especially with the grandmother was talking it was a little harder to, for me to follow along to mm -hmm. understand what she was saying like i would catch it but it was a little harder but even with all that said you know because you definitely know an older movie when you see it mm -hmm. i like that version better it was to me mm -hmm. the actors were more authentic and genuine so I can almost actually understand why the 1994 version 
I agree. And actually, I agree. I think with the 1957 version, as I said, um, at some point in our conversation, I think because the director was the same director, I think he said, I'm going to make the film I really wanted to make in 1939 and corrected all of his mistakes. <laughs> like, not corrected his mistakes. That's not the word I want to use. I think in 1939 was the first draft. 1957 <laughs> was the final draft. <laughs> and I like, and he did a great job with the 1957 version. Yes, definitely. the 1957 version, I think, is, is actually perfect. I really enjoyed that. Um, because in the 1994 version, like, I felt like they went a little extra and overboard, especially with, um, mm -hmm. like, because you can take a cruise from point A to point B. Yeah. Like, this whole plane thing, like, that was, mm -hmm. and the playing around on, you know, changing, like, it was just an element that was, mm -hmm. I guess, not needed. I agree. The 1957 version wins. If you want to watch Love Affair, Affair to Remember, 1957. Seven. Constance and I decided to give the movies, you know, you got to give the movies a rating. So we decided to be different and to use our favorite beverage, which is wine. So we decided to give each film a wine score. A wine score of one, we needed one glass of wine to get through the film, is the best score a film can get. A wine score of five, meaning we needed five glasses of wine to get through the film, is the <laughs> worst. So we have been, so for Love Affair, 1939. Two and a half glasses of wine. <laughs> I only needed two. I, two I, actually, one and a half. Actually, I didn't hate it. <laughs> I needed two and a half. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> a fair to remember that's the second one that's the second I one. only needed one yeah. i actually for my cynical little self i actually liked it mm -hmm. yeah it, it was yeah that was a perfect film uh love affair 1994 i needed a good four <laughs> yeah. bless their whole hearts they tried they tried but it's just like the chemistry and that's the Yet again, it makes me really question their marriage. Um, <laughs> but they're still married. I don't, yeah, you know, there's some other things going on there. Yeah, I need, yeah. Bless their whole hearts. The chemistry just wasn't there for me. All right. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> the team and family at a PCU uh, had a conversation over the winter where we were noting that it seems like every generation of actors seems to remake the same films, such as Little Women. And we wrote an article about it. If they're gonna keep remaking the films, who do we wanna see in the films? So as an homage to that article, as part of the movie remix, we will be asking that question. So Constance, who would be your dream cast for the primary characters for this film if they were to remake it? If they were to remake it, I would love to see Perry Washington mm -hmm. and Michael Ely okay. or Junie Smollett uh, Bell mm -hmm. and Anthony Mackey. Okay, and the elder would be? For me, mm -hmm. Felicia Rashad. The woman is just amazing. And I, Felice, and I, I, and uh, I like Felicia Rashad. I do. I, I, I like her. I like that. I, I, and because I think, if we were to ask anybody else, I think everybody, like, if the movie was to go into production tomorrow, I think everybody would put C Cicely Tyson in that role. And I love Cicely. I just like we have to bring somebody else into that age range, <laughs> right? <laughs> into that elder age range. And there's nothing wrong with Cicely, but I feel like Felicia Rashad has uh, there's just something special about the way she already has that matronly feel but she's a very classy and very um regal woman yeah and she could offer that role so much yeah i agree so um uh i have a wish and a dream in in this in this life to see Idris Elba do a Cary Grant role. 
I just do. So I just want to see that. And um, Terry McKay is supposed to be a singer because that is the job that she goes back to once she leaves her fiance. So we, Jennifer Hudson as Terry McKay. And for the elder, I want EGOT winner, Whoopi Goldberg. And I feel like for, for all that is out there and for all the people that are now have this question mark, Mm-hmm. I want you to explain that Whoopi. <laughs> I want you to explain Miss I think Ms. Goldberg as the elder. I think she would get I think Whoopi, I think it would give us a different side of Whoopi because the elder is soft. She is in her retirement year. She is in her last days because as you are aware, if you've seen the films, the elder is dying, is dead at the end of the film. And um and I think, it, and she's soft. She's 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 softer. And we, I don't think we have seen a role yet when Whoopi is being soft. And I would like to see that from her. And I know she can do it. Well, there's that little bit of she's there's a little softness in her. Well, maybe not softness. Mm-hmm. In 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 the color purple, right? But may that's not necessarily. It's not the same soft. Let me right. so because like because like, cause like I'm, I know I'm saying soft, but the the grandmother is soft with a quick wit, right? You know, so and I think and I and I think and I'm I can okay. Mm-hmm. I would I would I would not turn the movie down mm-hmm. <laughs> if I, I saw would be uh, <laughs> casted. Mm-hmm. I think we could do it. I think it would just be a different type of role for her. Yeah. You know who else would they would you know who else Hollywood might put in that role? But they would make her an aunt. They would put Angela Bassett in that role. But she would be the aunt. She might not be dead at the end of the film, but she would be but she would Well, she has to die. Right, she has to die. Because of the shawl. Because of the shawl, she has to die. (laughs) She has to die. She has to die. So, <laughs> I mean, but they can they can make her older. Mm-hmm. So what's fair. the trip? Okay, so in this remake, what is the trip? Because I don't think it has to be a cruise. But see, now to me, mm-hmm. I like the fact that it's a cruise. Mm-hmm. Because now in the 1957 version, mm-hmm. it's the fact that they're in close quarters. Mm-hmm. And then, so they're, so they run into each other. And then the fact that they're trying to get away because they're trying to protect their replications. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of dynamic that you're only really going to get on a cruise because if they were on an island somewhere, it's not the, it's not the same um, type of environment because, you know, if you're, if you're in a stable place, if you were, you know, like I said, on an island, Mm -hmm. you have the freedom to, relocate and go out and everything like you're not going to keep running into the same people and i think that's part of the thing that makes um the 1957 version so um so much more fun too was because everybody like they're trying not to you know cause any um raise any waves or cause any issues but everybody's in their business i'm like even that scene where She's dining alone and he's dining alone, but they're back to back and the whole place is looking at them. You That's know? what is missing from the 1994 version. Yes. Is that you don't have that same interaction that they right. were having outside of the guy with his wife and whoever mm-hmm. the other woman was. Right. Outside of that, 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 um, and I think that's what makes it so much more, um, mm-hmm you know, scandalous it's because everybody's in their business. Like oh, it's him. And he's got his, you know, his new, mm-hmm. his new toy over here and he's about to get married, but who is she? That's not the fiance. So the whole ship is just buzzing and is in their business. And you, and know you don't have that same feel. In the and you know what would be interesting version. in a 2020 version of that film is the social media aspect of it is that from 19, Ooh, yeah. Think about it, because from 1957, 
it was the photographer taking pictures and people buying the pictures from the photographer. In, in a 2020 version, it would be everybody taking pictures and posting them on Instagram. <laughs> Like, who's this? Right. And I think, like, yet again, like I said, I think to me anyway, mm -hmm. I would still, mm -hmm. I definitely like the, mm -hmm. the aspect of the cruise because of just that, mm -hmm. that very close mm -hmm. interaction that they had with the other uh, guests. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, I think we can still do a cruise. And we can still do a beautiful set of port, a beautiful port where the uh, elder lives and with a plane ride into New York City. Like, I don't see a transatlantic cruise. But we need I, something that's going to give them at least like three or four days or something to where they have time to, you yeah. know, to kind of fill each other out because... Like when I originally started watching the 1994 version, because mm -hmm. it's been so long since I've seen it, mm -hmm. until I rewatched it this time, I was like, are they about to like try to have this whole uh, love affair that took days to you know to accomplish in the 1957 version? Are they about to try to accomplish this on a 13-hour flight? Are you kidding <laughs> me? And then of course you know the plane. Mm -hmm troubles and then they end up on a boat anyway mm -hmm. so but i was like <laughs> yeah it's like that didn't even work right that didn't even work right so, although i will say the one thing i like that um that didn't happen in the 19, 1957 version mm -hmm. that happened in the 1994 was when um the playboy pays off uh the steward to get rid of the photographer that's that constantly was funny. Like, I appreciate the fact that he was going through all these extra things to get ready, you know? Yeah. And he's like, you know, well, Princess Di is over here in Bora Bora. Yeah. You know, go there. And he was right on it. So I yeah. appreciate that little scene because it's like, it shows that he acknowledged what was going on and found a way know. to get rid of him. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. I, you're right. I do. I, I did like that touch from the 1994 version. But I'm not too sure. But I, that would be interesting to see, like I said, in a 2020 version, how would they handle the social media aspect? The social media aspect of it, because you would not be able to get away from, 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 from yeah, because there are women, I mean, grand, because there will be people on the ship that will not give a damn. I don't care. You know, I wouldn't care. But there will be somebody on the ship that would. Which actually brings in as a quick snippet mm -hmm. the the fiancés, like both of their fiancés amazing people like mm -hmm. oh yeah you know, right both yeah both of their fiancés were awesome people because they handled this mm -hmm. like eh, it's okay like and especially like her fiance was like oh it's okay that you do you know but let's like because in both versions he was like well why don't we tell him let's just tell him so he yeah, knows all three versions mm -hmm. you know like and mm -hmm. They were so supportive of just them find being you know being allowed to love, which I think would be really interesting because I don't see that for a twenty twenty version. Like so many people, you know, it's, how do you say? I guess we regress. We're we're not yeah. that mature anymore, right? You know, right? That 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 is that is a lot. Of, you're right. That that is an interesting because he was definitely um, the Terry's fiance who in the 1994 version is played by Pierce Brosnan, who I also love. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but every version of that, of her fiance is, let us tell him, let us go get him and bring him here. No, Pierce wasn't, because Pierce didn't know, but the first two did. No, 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 he he knew he knew okay you're right he did know i apologize yeah but, but yeah because he because he because he did he did okay so he maybe he he didn't know before mm -hmm. the show i'll give you oh. that he didn't know before mm -hmm. the the end of the show but he figured it out like let's do something about that and she was like no mm -hmm. you know yeah so yeah so yeah but they're and all then but even his fiance was really understanding and you know most women who were rejected because of another woman mm -hmm. you know especially in the 1957 version when he would he went on air saying i will be you know 
the wedding is set for in six months and blah 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 and it's like okay you know she's like okay and this whole time you're thinking it's about you and then you're gonna find out later that it's not so you essentially made me look stupid because you're getting married but it's not to me right and she's still super cool understanding when she sees him next it's like hey let me take you someplace how many women in 2020 are about that life? Oh, shit. No, none of us about that life. Not for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah! In fact, I can tell you the pettiest straw, but ow, oh, you not married? Hmm. Ah, sip my tea. Right. <laughs> <I'm> just <Okay>. saying. <laughs> so the last question for love affair, affair to remember. We talked about who we would like to see if they would remake the film. Do they need to remake this film again or should they leave it alone? I say leave it alone because there's, in, in 1957, you can almost believe the whimsy of people like, Oh, I fell in love and, but I love him, you know, and you can, you can believe it almost. In 2020, yeah, I'm not buying it because it, we're, we're, we, I just think that how we think now, mm -hmm. where if in the same circumstances, like, we're not going to receive it the same if, if, some man is like, you know, I'm taking care of you. I'm buying, you know, gifts. I'm, I'm taking care of the house, this, that, the third. I'm, you know, da, da, da. A woman is taking care of dude, like, you know, multi-million rich. And to give that up to just live barely getting by because of love? I'm not buying it. Just, and I mean, I guess maybe, you know, Call me Jaden. <laughs> but we need but we need romance. We need some of that. Um I'm not saying we don't. I'm just saying you don't know, we're right. asking actresses, actors and actresses to do a whole lot. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Gotta, they gotta overcome that mountain. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the controversial thing. I'm gonna say the controversial thing. If they can get the right pairing actor and actress with the right chemistry. They can't just throw anybody at it. Even though Warren Beatty and Annette Bening are married, something about that didn't. Right. Yeah, that, that's not, yeah, they had been married two years by the time this, the, by the time that came to screen. Mm. Uh, um, right. yeah. That speaks to that marriage, huh? <laughs> they still married. They still married. Um, if you can get the couple with the right chemistry, I think it could happen. I think it could work. And we will agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, we will link i will link in the show notes also uh below uh where we found all the films um so that if you want to watch all three versions of the films we will let you know where they were uh so we will we have a list we have three decisions we have three films that we have selected for our next uh movie remix we have go ahead constance tell us what our choices are we have the thomas crown affair mm -hmm. Ocean's Eleven. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and what was the third one? Mm -hmm. Help me out, Sherry, with the third the one. Italian job. The Italian job. I'm down for all three. <laughs> yes, yes. Because I loved. I and you know what? I'll be that person to say I loved all the remakes to mm -hmm. all of those. I loved all of them. Mm -hmm. So, and because I'm not usually the person that watches the original. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be interesting to see the originals on these films. Okay, so which one we go? You know, where things go. Yep. Yeah, so which one we go with first? 
I just watched I just watched the original Italian job this weekend as well. Italian job it is. Italian job it is. Okay. So I will let everyone know the original Italian job is actually available on Amazon Prime. Is actually without you don't have to pay for it. It's if you have of Amazon Prime, it is available as part of your Prime membership. Uh the Italian job, the newer version is uh you have to rent it. I do know that already because I'm going to go and do that. Uh, so uh, we will see you back at our next upload where we will be talking about the Italian job. Constance, I will see you next time. <laughs> Peace. Happy movie remix. Happy movie remix. Bye. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs>